you ever feel like when watching lectures or sitting in classes that you're not really doing anything with yourself and that you should be doing something more useful so that when you go and revise content, it's not like you're just looking at it for the first time? No? Well, if so, then this video probably isn't for you. At least in my case, I felt like this many times, particularly since coming to university. I've now just finished my second year of medicine at Cambridge University, and I found that the jump from school to university has been incredibly hard. So I wanted to share some of the thoughts I've had about this jump here on this YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to break down a few different methods for how to watch lectures, whether this be not watching lectures at all or taking meticulous notes when watching lectures. And I'm going to rank these on a scale of one to five in three different aspects. These being understanding, so how well this method allows you to understand the topic, revision potential, so how well this method allows you to create revision material for the future, how time and energy efficient this method is in particular. I chose these three criteria because I feel like these are probably the three most important things to consider when watching lectures and what to do when watching lectures. However, you may disagree with me, and that's perfectly fine. I'd love to hear your criticisms, so please let me know if there's anything you feel I should have done differently. After evaluating the proposed methods, I'm going to give you a few more tips on extra things you can do that come alongside the watching of lectures, as well as my personal experience of watching lectures over the past few years and how it has evolved over time. I've been rambling on for far too long now, so let's begin starting with method zero. Don't watch the lecture at all. For this method, I've ranked this zero out of five for understanding, zero out of five for revision potential, but five out of five for efficiency. Let me explain. Despite me treating this method as sort of a joke, it is a viable strategy. There are people who simply prefer to not watch lectures. They may just read the handouts or revise from textbooks, or even just do a bunch of past papers until they feel like they know all of the content. And if that works for them, then that's perfectly fine. However, this isn't something that I like to do personally, because I feel like I can't really remember things if I don't understand them first. And actually watching lectures is pivotal in ensuring my understanding of the lecture content. This being said, it is an option for some people, so I can't rule it out. Moving on to method one, just watch the lecture and absorb it by diffusion. For the rankings of this method, I'd give it two out of five for understanding, one out of five for revision potential, and three out of five for efficiency. I believe this is probably the worst strategy you can take. Not only are you sitting in a lecture and not really doing anything to ensure that you will remember this content in the future, but you're also taking the time to watch this lecture and not really gaining anything from it. So what's really the point? I'd say that this strategy is only really useful when you're watching something for the pure interest in it. It's okay to, for example, go to an invited talk or an optional lecture and not take any notes, not do anything active, but try to engage with the speaker and not have to worry about being examined on this content. However, for content that is examinable, I'd say this is probably the worst thing you can do. Moving on to method two, this is making notes from scratch. So for this, I'd rank it a five out of five for understanding, a three out of five for revision potential, and a two out of five for efficiency. So this is the tried and true method that basically everyone uses at school. The teacher flicks to a slide and the students frantically scribble down anything that's on that slide so that they can then refer back to it when revising for a test. However, given the density of information that you come across when at uni, it is quite different to when you're in school, and it is much harder to keep up if you are trying to make notes from scratch. However, some people have insane typing speeds, and, you know, they are able to keep up. The only problem with this is that, in the end, you're left with a humongous set of notes that you don't really know what to do with it. At least my experience in school when making notes from scratch is that I'd often never really read back over the notes, and instead I'd rely on other resources that were more concise and likely more accurate than my frantically scribbled notes. This being said, this method is good for a deeper understanding, particularly when taking these notes by hand. It has been scientifically proven that taking notes by hand helps enhance your understanding of the topic when compared to taking notes on the computer. If you're just transcribing anything the lecturer says, then you're not actually processing any of the information. Whatever the lecturer says is just coming into your brain and out of your fingers, and you're not actually doing anything with that information. However, with handwritten or even summarized but typed notes, then you're forced to take a much more concise approach to notes. If you're able to distill each spoken paragraph that the lecturer says into just a sentence or two, then this can be highly beneficial because it leaves you with a really condensed set of notes that can actually be quite useful for the future. With this method, it's therefore important that you create a system so that it's easier to go back over these notes and quickly identify the things that you need to know rather than having to flick through loads of different pages and spend hours trying to find whatever it is you're looking for. On the other hand, this method can be rendered sort of obsolete at many universities, particularly British universities. This is because of the introduction of lecture handouts. If you don't know, then lecture handouts are basically just whatever the lecturer says, but in note form. So they create maybe a five or six page document that contains everything that you need to know from that lecture for the exam. These are often exactly what you're going to be tested on. So if you already have this revision resource and these professionally created handouts, then what's the point in making your own notes when you already have notes there for you? This leads me on to method three, 
annotating the slides or handout. For this method, I rated it a 5 out of 5 in understanding, a 4 out of 5 in revision potential, and a 3 out of 5 in efficiency. This can be done in a number of ways, but the basic principle is the same. You either print or generate an electronic copy of the handout or slides, and then you basically go ham. You can add sentences, you can highlight things, you can put question marks, add things that you don't know, add diagrams that you've downloaded from the web, and basically make the handout your own. This is so that, one, you create an amazing revision resource for the future, two, you gain a full understanding of whatever is on that handout, and three, you ensure that you've adequately covered all the material that may be asked in the exam. However, there are some caveats with this method. It really does depend on how well it is done. If it's done well, then it can be really, really helpful. If not, then it can be basically useless, and you may end up with a big mess that neither you nor anyone else will ever actually understand. However, in my experience, there's a couple of things that can be done to gain the most out of lectures. Firstly, colour coding is very important, particularly with highlighters. Highlight what you don't know in one colour, what is important in another colour, any particular categories in a third colour, and anything else you may think of in further and further colours. However, make sure to keep track of this and keep this colour coding consistent throughout all of your handouts, so that when you open up a handout, you can instantly recognize the different attributes you've labeled to different parts of the handout. For example, something that really worked for me was when studying pharmacology, I would highlight every drug in purple. This is so that when reading over the handout, each drug would really pop out of the page, and I would be able to instantly find it within the handout, whereas having to read each sentence and trying to figure out where the drugs were that I needed to know about. Another thing that can be really helpful is adding visual aids such as diagrams. Remember, these handouts are your own. And it is perfectly okay to go onto Google or even draw yourself graphs that may help represent whatever it is you're learning or diagrams that are particularly useful in describing whatever concept it is you're trying to learn. These visual aids make the handout far more memorable and some lecturers do just have a block of text which can be quite hard to digest and remember. So if you personalize the handout and make it your own then it can be quite helpful in the future. There are a load of other things you can do but essentially it's up to you to adapt and personalize whatever it is that works best for you. The fourth and final method is making questions. I rate this a 4 out of 5 in understanding, a 5 out of 5 in revision potential, and a 4 out of 5 in efficiency. This may be writing questions directly on a note-taking app, or maybe into a spreadsheet, or even onto an actual flashcard app such as Anki. However, no matter how you do this, the idea behind this method is to write questions for yourself that you can then use further on when revising this topic to test yourself on so that you're revising using active recall, helping you memorize the content for the exam. This being said, making questions directly from a lecture or a handout that hasn't yet been assimilated nor understood can be quite dangerous, because if you don't understand the content, then how can you ensure that, firstly, the questions and answers that you're writing are factually correct, and secondly, that they're at all relevant to the content that you really need to know? Therefore, this method is particularly useful once you've actually understood the content. So if you do have access to a handout or slides before the lecture, then it might be worth having a look at this before, just to gauge awareness of the important points that are conveyed during the lecture, so that when watching the lecture, you can make these questions with an already good understanding of the content being covered. Alternatively, you could write the questions after watching the lecture and once you've already understood everything. However, this is obviously a lot more time consuming and therefore less efficient. So it is up to you to adapt the method that you think works best. Here's a summary of the methods I have discussed and their associated ratings. Now I'm just gonna throw around a couple of ideas that may be helpful to you and may not be for when watching lectures or classes at university. My first extra is pre-reading. I feel that this helps a lot. Essentially, this is taking a lecture handout generally. Slides can be used, but these are less useful because the context of the lecturer isn't present when you just have the slides. And with this handout, you annotate it, you add diagrams, you highlight things that you don't know, you add questions, so that when watching the lecture, you already have this understanding of what is in that lecture, and you may be able to answer anything that you don't understand, filling in the gaps. Now obviously this is more time consuming, because for a one hour lecture it may take you half an hour or an hour in just pre-reading for that very lecture, which sounds insane. However, when you only have two or three lectures a day at university, and these lectures are so content heavy, it can be very useful to be able to keep up. This may also be something quite brief, such as just googling the topic that the lecture is on, and finding anything that may be relevant or interesting to you, so that you gain some interest in the topic before you go to the lecture. My second extra method is to create mind maps. This ideally would be immediately after or within the next day after any lecture that you've watched. Now these mind maps can range from a five minute scribble of the main ideas of the lecture to a one hour detailed summary of whatever it is you've learned in that lecture. However, the point I'm trying to get across is creating a mind map for each individual lecture will allow you to create a visual picture of that lecture. And when you're trying to revise things, you can place the different pockets of information within the mind map, which may help with memorizing the content, at least it has for me. The important thing to take away with these mind maps is to balance the summarization and conciseness of whatever it is you're trying to build with the detail that you want to include. 
So my personal experience with watching lectures has varied wildly over the past two years at university. I'd say that this is partly because of my inexperience in first year, as well as the introduction of new methods of taking notes and watching lectures throughout both the first and second year, because I just wasn't aware of these, and that's kind of why I'm making this video, to help ease the transition from high school and sixth form into university. So what I did in first year, at least in the first term, was do method one, learn by diffusion, and basically try to remember everything without taking any notes, because I thought, well, I have a handout, why would I make notes? This proved to be a huge mistake and I realized that things weren't going in, and when I was revising the content, it was as if I was just seeing it for the first time. I therefore changed my approach in the second term of first year, where I started to make questions, and I made a huge set of questions both for the second and first term of first year, and this allowed me to create flashcards, which I then used to test myself on, and ultimately revise more effectively for my end-of-year exams. However, going into second year, I again completely changed my approach. Instead of making questions by hand, I relied on external sources of flashcard decks and things like that, and instead focused on using the handouts and making them my own, annotating the handouts to my heart's desire and really trying to understand the whole topic while in the lecture. I feel like this worked best for me, and when doing small group teaching, I feel like I understood the content a lot better than I ever did in first year. I also started pre-reading a lot more intensely in second year, so I would highlight the handout and take note of anything that I didn't understand before the lecture so that I would answer these questions when in the lecture. And despite this being less time efficient, I felt that this was really useful for me, particularly since I wasn't able to keep up with the quick pace of the lecturers in second year if I hadn't done that pre-reading beforehand. Then when revising, I would create mind maps of the lectures and do active recall using Anki, so that I both understood the general concepts of the lectures as well as tried to memorize the important details. Now, take anything I say with a huge pinch of salt, because I pretty much ranked in the middle of the pack in first year and slightly better than that in second year. So my advice is really only as valuable as that, and I'm just trying to offer my experiences so that you may learn something from them. So please don't go away and just do what I did, T for T, just because that's how I did it. I would rather you consider the techniques that I proposed, maybe looked online and had a look at other ones that I maybe didn't discuss, and adapted a method that really worked for you that you can then personalize and optimize and make sure that you're really getting the most out of the lectures, because that's what the lecturers are teaching you for. They want you to learn. So make sure you take that chance. If you enjoyed this video or you found it at all useful, then consider subscribing. I know I haven't been around for about two years now, but I'm hoping to release more videos in the near future and hopefully get into a regular upload schedule over the coming months. If you want to watch any of my previous videos, the video on how I studied for tests back when I was in school is up here, and the video on how I cram for exams is here.